You know, what an enormous, what an enormous waste of everyone's time, of everyone's money, all that money spent for the exact same result. Anyway, enough about the Leafs. Let's talk about the election. <laughs> Let's not talk about the election. No, no. You don't, you don't want to. <laughs> Let's not talk about the election. What? <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Man, says the guy who's going to Leafs media day tomorrow. What? You're going to talk. You're going to face these people face to face, nose to nose. Yeah. And, and I'm going to ask them all the hard-hitting questions. Who's your goofiest teammate? Hmm? Who's the best dressed? You know, all those hard-hitting media day questions? Yeah. Who can tape a stick to fast? Are you going to do a dang it at least media day? Hey, just yeah. Show them, just, just show them the last five all or nothing games? No. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine if I did that and just tried to get punched in the face? Yeah. Who would do it? My bet's on Jake Muzzin. Mm. Uh, you know what? Maybe. Maybe. For you sure. might. I don't think you'd say it to Jake Muzzin's face either. I think he would be punching you on behalf of somebody else. Well, he's like six foot three, so I would say it to like his beard. Ah, I like see. If I would, I'd be eye to beard with him. Right. And at, no, you don't go to media day to be confident. Do you enjoy media day? Is it a fun thing? Is it something that I like people, it. people get excited about? Well, all the Leafs should be worried because the, the last time I went to Leafs media day, uh, Lou Lamorello traded five guys who had just had their picture Has taken. Has it been that long? They haven't invited you back since? Uh, I don't think I have. No. I remember that because you. I think, I think you came over to my house afterwards, my condo at the time, and recorded with Jesse and I after the right. media day because we talked about the, the Taylor back, right? I think you're yeah. Because you got we his did picture a, taken. It's like sorry, uh-huh. you're an Islander now. Well, and we did a full day's work, and then we had to go to the ACC for. I think that was a video I did with Luke Fox about. Um, they had this new menu at the Air Canada Center. Oh, and then, I remember that. Yes, yeah. and then I think I came and saw you guys. And on our way to that event, we had just done a full day's work. We had left. We're like less than twenty minutes after we left. Announcement that they made a trade. The <laughs> I'm like, you bastard! I've ever heard of? That's crazy. Can I say two things about that? One of them was Carter Verhage. Mm-hmm. Whenever a stadium introduces, oh, there's new food. It's usually. Hey, they have a pulled pork burger now, or just some other type of uh, extravagant sandwich. It's never a great meal they're adding. It's just some fluffy sandwich. And they're like, hey, this costs $14. And we're going to put out a press release about it. Is this a shot of Bob Nicholson? No. I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you so (laughs) anti-Alberta right now? I I don't understand. And the other thing. Where does this come from? What are the events that are happening at Media Day? Like when you get there, are there like activities happening? Or is it like stations you go through? Uh, Well, what I did. So this is going to be different for me. So I'm going to get one-on-one time. Um, I was in the scrums uh, the first time I went. And like I'm always... I, I, this will be no shock to either of you, but I'm always at the back of the scrums on account of I don't like to push anybody <laughs> because I'm very polite. Right. Which uh, media day is not the time to be polite, but sometimes you're out polited. So I got pushed to the front by Paul Hendrick, who went, come on, Stevie. And so I, I got to go to the front for uh, Brad Boys. Oh, okay. Yeah. This A lot of things align um, because... I remember one of the things I asked all the players was about the Blue Jays because they were doing so well. So that's how long it's been. They were good. They were bad for a while, and now they're good again. <laughs> mm-hmm. So th- that's that's great. So it's just a bunch of scrums. It's a bunch of scrums, but I'm I'm gonna get one on one time, right. and they also uh, they get their pictures taken, and I think some of them do. Oh, they do like shoulder uh stick over the shoulder staring at the camera mean mugging for, yeah they for do their the, green sh- green screen shots for the season yeah for yeah. when they're in the starting lineup or they yeah. get called up or and they're so dr- i love those dramatic like <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody ever gave face like david clarkson we've talked about this a lot those eyes man i'm telling you i don't know if there's anybody else who looks at a camera more intensely like is there any other leaf in leaf history who has looked at a camera more intensely uh nathan parrott that's that's about Nathan Parrot. Remember, throwback. Nathan Parrot, who would beat the shit out of you and then join like the special forces. Yeah, yeah, this is, that's about right. But other than that, it was, it was Nathan Parrot and David Clarkson. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Ben Andres a little bit. Ben too. Andres. Ben Andres had that hyper energy. 
I liked that about him. Oh yeah, because he was he was on a team at the time that did not hustle. Terrifying, and he, and he would hustle. It yeah. was nice. It was good to see. He had the crazy eyes. Like, uh, not everyone needs the crazy eyes. Like, uh, Rich Clune is very relaxed. I, f- I feel like he's probably lulled a bunch of people into a false sense of security and then <laughs> kicked their ass. My favorite was the game we went to where he beat up the wrong guy. <laughs> yes. That was a Marley's game, right? Yeah, it, was a, yeah. it was a Marley's game. Someone got hit from behind, and Rich Kloon did the confetti gloves and beat up the wrong player. <laughs> Honestly, it's sort of like, I'm going to start throwing punches, and if you happen to be in my area, that's that's your problem. He just he picked one. Wow. We went to some fun Marley's games, because we also went to one where, who was the goalie who caught it with his bare hand? That was Garrett Sparks in game five against Utica. There you go. That, mm. Encyclopedia Steve. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. Was, that was absolutely ridiculous. And and then you guys also got to ride the tricycles around the arena. Which was not planned. No. They picked two randoms and it happened to be Adam and I. Yeah. That was that was hilarious. Hey, and then they said to us, hey, you guys look like two big Marley's fans. And we're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are. <laughs> you guys want to ride tricycles at commercial break? And I won the tricycle race because they gave Adam a broken tricycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Uh, honestly, Steve deserved it. But my my tricycle, like as soon as I started pedaling, by the end of the race, I'm like, that's that, that was straight. I'm yeah. holding it straight, and it's like the the, the bars are just loose. That whatever. full video is on our YouTube because we got it from the Marley's yes! PR people, right? We, oh. They gave us the in arena footage. So I'll post it on a Thursday, and there'll be throw, Throwback Thursday. You know, Steve uh, and Adam race at the Marley's. We had so good. we had such a great uh, connection to the Marley's, and our guy who who set up all those Marley's nights. I think he moved on to like Mastercard. He was a great guy. Um, but it was one of those things where like, I think it'd be nice to be able to do something like that again. Mm-hmm. I doubt that they're Absolutely. allowing us to like skate after games <laughs> this season because of COVID. But once, once this sort of all figures itself out, I would really love to get back to that because I think those were some of the best events we did. Oh. Uh, and we had a box one time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But they gonna... gave us the box. <laughs> yeah. And then and then uh, the guys that came, and, and God bless you, you guys were a party. They were oh, crazy. East yeah. Coasters. Yeah, they were wild. They were wild. So here's the thing. We get these box seats, and we're like, oh, this is super cool, right? And and But then <laughs> at the end of the night, they deliver the, the tab. And we're like, what? oh. And I didn't know. Neither you did told I. me in the parking lot. Oh, did, did no, I, I, no. I'm pretty sure he still no, paid it. We all found out up there. Oh, we did? Yeah. yeah okay, I don't There's remember. There's no this. way you found it in the parking I think, lot if I knew. I think I paid oh, it. Yeah. I, I paid it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, well, because I was like, fuck. Was, I can't. It was over $700, is what I remember. <laughs> Over seven hundred dollars. These guys Ooh. have racked up in beer and pizza. That's we, impressive. We thought it was comps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so like, we're giving you the box. We're like, oh, that's cool. Pizza and beer. We right? were the yeah. kings of Rico Coliseum. Oh just, my god. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, go this, ahead. This is on MLSE. Yeah. Charge it to Shanahan. And I didn't Food, have- wine, <laughs> be merry, and just hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Brendan's picking this up. Nope. No, no uh, he was not. Yeah. So anyway, that was it. Was a fun night though, and and. <laughs> You know that seven hundred bucks could have done a lot for me in other ways, but I'm happy oh, that uh, we managed to, uh, to to have a good time, and I hope those guys never forget. If it. anybody ever gives you a free box, ask them if the food comes with it. Yes, yes. please yeah. make sure. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake we did. Um, before we get into the show, uh, I, I do want to mention that um, I, I keep teasing these announcements that we have. Um, Are you going to announce an announcement? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so as of right now, we got two days. On Thursday, we will have one, probably two major announcements. And I'm talking about the kind of announcement that shifts the entire way that you listen to this show uh, and that you listen to the SDPN. And, you know, a lot of people asked us why we changed the name um, to SDPN. Uh, we'll let you know. I'll say it. We're introducing a fourth member. It's Poochie. And <laughs> he will be the, the the straw that stirs the drink. Yeah. yeah you no. always turn to the wrong camera. You do. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, you turned to my, no, I was my going eyesight. I don't know why. You, no. I, I but I put it on. When you turn to the camera, I put it on your camera. And then you're looking around that way. And you know it looks what? really funny. Our stage director back there is yeah. really, <laughs> really messing this up. Yeah. So anyway, uh, just want to let you know that that is what's coming. It's very, very exciting. Uh, thrilled about that. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be, it's, both of them are extremely exciting. Uh, one of them, I think, is going to be um, 
I, I just, you know, it's been it's been in the works for a long, long time, and I think it's going to be very, very cool. And I think are the fans excited? Well, the sponsors are excited. Wow, no, it's going to be excited. great on Thursday when it doesn't happen. Oh no, it's going to happen, have, and we have to delay. <laughs> it's going it to happen. And it's, and it's happening on Thursday. No, it's gonna I be another it's announcement. Happening. It's going to be another announcement no. about another announcement. All right, I want you to I want you to <laughs> in the comment section tell us what you think it is. You go. Oh, Discord, I like that Discord community. Tell us what you think it is. Poochie. Actually, take two Poochie, guesses yeah. because we're probably going to have two. So there will be one major announcement in the first hour, <laughs> another in the second. It's not Poochie. It's not Poochie. This, you're really steaming this up. Well, I think <laughs> it's a big freaking deal. It's huge. It is a big freaking deal. And you're being real vague and super descriptive be. about it. I have to. So it's, you're very Stevie. This, are these announcements based on Biest? Uh, no, no, they're better than that. They're, oh. they, they're, <laughs> they're best. Oh, yeah, what's better than best? Oh. Ice cold. <laughs> Stop it. That's good. That all right, good. all right. That so, good. so, <laughs> so, I'm not sure if you saw this interview, but nothing. I think this might go down as the quote of the season in the NHL, and we haven't even played a game yet. I love we haven't it. played a preseason game yet. They're just in rookie camps. Um. So, Jesse, I want you to bring up this clip. It's from Tim and Friends on Sportsnet. Steve's familiar with them. And, uh, yeah, Sportsnet, you've heard of them, right? Tim and his friends. Right. And, Jesse, when you're ready, you play this clip because nothing rules harder than Jack Hughes standing up for Quinn Hughes. Have you seen this clip? I have not. Oh, you're going to like this clip. Very, very much. This is Jack Hughes standing up for Quinn Hughes. For Quinn Hughes. Because, I guess the context is... Tim is asking him, hey, is your brother going to be in camp or not? Is he going to sign with the Canucks? Here we go. Quinn in Vancouver is waiting on a deal. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask for the inside track, no matter how many Canucks fans tweet into the show. I will leave that alone. But does seeing what he's going through right now make you think about your own extension? Or can you just focus on hockey right now? Yeah, just for me, I think I'm just going to focus on the game. Let that let my let my planning do the talking um see how the year goes but you know quinn he he's deserved the money he should get um you know he's had two pretty pretty good years i know last year he uh people were talking about his defense and and his dashes but you know when you play on one of the worst teams in the division and in the league um that's bound to happen so uh, I think he's just waiting now. I know, I know he loves Vancouver and he wants to he wants to play there, but but the number has to be right. So uh, we'll see we'll see when that gets done. Okay, all right, we'll pause there. Oh uh, heavens, that's pretty <laughs> savage. Now let me tell you, is that not the quote of the year already? So that's got it. Like if we have a can I we, we have a top ten list here of quotes of the year that is already number one. We don't have any others on the list, but. Who's going to beat that? So I spoiled it for myself by reading the text oh, like before no, well, we watched it. Go, no, no, no. But wait, though. It made it better. <laughs> okay. All because right. I'm like, oh, he's going to give his brother shit. Like he's ah, he's going to make fun of his brother. Yeah. And nope, that's just him earnestly saying the Canucks suck. That's just yeah. a flow of consciousness <laughs> just talking about the team. That is a, a guy just going, well. My brother plays for a bad team, <laughs> let me so give, they should pay him. Let, let me give you, this is hilarious because um, some of the uh, odds are out for you know teams and how well they're going to do this year, obviously, out of Vegas. The one that struck me in the Pacific Division, obviously, um, Vegas is a, a, a minus 200. So if you bet it, if it's a minus 200, Jesse, put that into context for somebody that doesn't bet. Uh, if you bet a uh, hundred dollars, you'll win a hundred dollars. You'll get two hundred dollars back. So you okay. win a hundred dollars. What if you're you're betting on a plus two thousand team? Plus two thousand. So what's your bet make? Your hundred dollars is gonna make you uh, nineteen hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. So you get so, two thousand dollars back. So the Canucks are a plus two thousand uh, for the Stanley Cup this year. Ahead of them, Vegas in order from one to where Vegas, Edmonton, Calgary. L.A., Seattle. Oh! <laughs> Seattle with $30 million in cap space, and the only teams under them are San Jose at 6600 and Anaheim at 25000 I'd oh, take the Anaheim yeah, Put 100 bucks on Anaheim. Why not, right? If you have it. If you have it, why not? <laughs> wait, 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 honestly, would it hurt if, if, you, if you took a bet on the bottom 16 teams in odds? 
One of them's going to make it and pay for that whole thing, is it? Aren't they? Oh, th- that's a, to win the Stanley Cup, not to win the cup, but just to me. I that is to win the Stanley Cup. But if you had odds to make the playoffs, wouldn't it make sense to put like a small bet on all the bad teams and one of them's going to surprise? Right? One of them. So. One of them. Like, well, there was the bet that I sent you guys yesterday that uh, Justin Bourne tweeted out the oh. over the the over under for Leafs points this upcoming season was one hundred and seven point five. I wanted to remortgage the house. So Toronto, Tampa, <laughs> Boston is how the is how I think that's cool bet. Yeah, uh, cool bets. Th- that's that's who they they got the Leafs being the best regular or not the best regular. Yeah, best regular season. So in the league? Well, no, for Atlantic. Uh plus 225, Tampa's plus 250 and Boston's plus 300. But that's not set on what they think is going to happen or anything based on uh like the hockey team or the hockey play. It's based on Let's get the maximum amount of money for the house. Well, I was going to slam the under, though. <laughs> I was right. Because sl- I love them, but they're not going to win 50 games. They're What? Right. But this that's year a, in the Atlantic. It's, it's set at how can we get the maximum amount of money into our business? Man, that is. Uh, but the odds sucked. Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. also it was also minus one ten, I think you said, right? Yeah. So you're betting you're gonna win ten bucks. Yeah, I was gonna but wait. That's what it would be. So you yeah, yeah. So you hundred dollars. That's gonna win you one hundred and ten dollars back. Oh, yeah. So you win ten bucks. You I win thought, ten bucks. I wow. thought it said ninety when I put it in, like an additional ninety. If I put a hundred, I would get a hundred and ninety. I think it said. No, it should be you'll get a hundred and ten dollars. See, on this your $100 is dollar bet. This is why you bet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is why. She's like, what? I was expecting one hundred ninety dollars. <laughs> Damn it! That's why I didn't make the bet. All right. Well, this is the thing, right? It's it's a um, it's a uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where I, the Canucks are. It's not looking great. But without Hughes in the lineup, it's not looking super great. And they, uh, you know, everybody expects. That they'll sign by the the season, but my question is, again always to Canucks fans who love to just go yeah f you the Leafs is where where's this money supposed to come from? People are like people are like yeah, but they have I, I don't know what do they have fifteen million right now in cap space? What do they have? I think that's their question as well. Like if they have that much, which seems even pretty high. What are you expecting to pay Hughes and and Patterson? Well, I know that they've got all the leverage, but really, what are you expecting to pay them? They don't, though. They not in this case. Well, why do you, why they, do you say that? They don't because there's two, right? Oh. So, and I think they've got ten million, but by the deadline, it'll be thirty six million. I think <laughs> Quinn's problem is, uh, I mean, if you're Jim Benning and you're the Canucks, you have to prioritize. And how is Elias Patterson not your top priority? even ahead of Quinn Hughes. Mm-hmm. That's his problem right now. And it sounds like Elias Pettersson wants his money. He wants his payday. He wants a long-term deal, right? Mm-hmm. So Quinn is left with what? You're left with what's left. <laughs> You're left with, uh, you know, let's say Pettersson gets $9 million or something on a, on a long-term deal. Well, what does that leave them with? Six? So you got to take a bridge or you got to sit until they trade somebody. And then you're the guy who sat and they had to trade somebody. It's uh, it's a tough situation. What I would be asking as a salty Canucks fan is, uh, Jack, don't you play for the Devils? Right. <laughs> I would have freaking asked. A team wow. that finished below the Canucks last year in the standings? I mean, maybe speaking from experience. I suppose. Well, you know, yeah. you're going to be a dash on a shitty team. I mean, well, listen, uh, it probably gives him more credence, wouldn't you think? Yeah, you're well. <laughs> he should have said, "Take it from me." I'm just, which would have made it even better. Here's what I'm looking at, okay? With the Canucks, you got Quinn Hughes unsigned. You probably don't care, or they think that they don't care because ah, uh, you got to get Pedersen signed. If you had waited a year, Beagle, Roussel, and who's the other guy they traded to Arizona for Oliver Ekman Larson? The other expiring bat oh. is it Louis Erickson? Yes. Was it? Yeah. All three of them. Yeah. All of them would have expired. Instead, you took on Oliver Ekman Larson till almost the end of the decade. And and then on top of that, you've got your left defense is pretty short up even without like even if you don't sign sorry, even if you don't have Oliver Ekman Larson, take that money and give it to Qu- to Quinn Hughes. And then you've got him, you've got uh Rathbone, you've got like you you've got other options and if Listen, if Tucker Pullman's worth 2.5 million, hopefully he's smart enough that he can move over. 
Like if uh. I don't know, man. I just I honestly like maybe maybe I'm wrong here, and I've been wrong many many times before, but it just no. strikes me as they could have just left it without OEL. Yeah, they could have just left it. You're a year away, and what that says to me is that the Aquilinis are saying to Jim Benning, "This is it." Uh oh, like he's going for it. Well, he's, you better go for it. He's treating it like there's no tomorrow. Well, yeah, but and and I think with decisions that definitely affect tomorrow. You know, the JT Miller trade looked pretty good that first year, right? I don't think they regret that. I don't think they regret it either. But last year didn't look great. Didn't have a great year. The, and and yeah. no no and it's not it's not that I think JT Miller in a vacuum is a bad deal. But what I'm saying is they may they started making deals two years ago like they were a playoff team, or two seasons ago. It's not two years. Who the hell knows what time is right now? And I, I don't think, I don't think anyone sees them as that. I don't think anyone sees Thatcher Demko and Yaroslav Halak are their goalies. Not bad. Don't hate it. But I, I don't know where this team is in the division they're in, with probably the resurgent Flames. You, you don't know like, what they are. Again, we don't know what the Canucks are. You know what I mean? We've been saying this for years. And here's what I'm seeing next. Here's what we say. What do we always say? Kills a cap. Uh, oh, all those mid yeah. contracts. Yeah, so let me, let me run you through the first uh, first six contracts on the forwards. Okay, and I'll tell you if I like them or not. 5875. Five. For what? Besser. That, I like that. 5.5 5 for Horvat. I really like 5. that. 5.25 5 for JT Miller. Really like that. 4.950 for Connor Garland. Uh, we'll see. Tanner Pearson, 3.25. That one's tough. Jason Dickinson, 2.65. That one's actually really good. Not bad. I don't, like, I don't mind that. And then you go OEL, 7.26. That one, that one's tough. Tyler Myers got three more years at 6 million. That one's real tough. Travis Hamannick, 3 million for the next two. I kind of think that one's tough too. Tucker Pullman, four years, 2.5 million. We'll see. Probably tough. So the forward group looks good. I Yeah, because I was expecting that to be a disaster. Well, it was when Beagle, Roussel, and Louis Erickson were there. Right. That was like, but, those are, again, like just literally bring in one guy, one person. To manage the cap. Yeah. And the Canucks could take off. And what's that cost him? A hundred grand? Like uh, what's a salary for a guy that can do do math? Maybe a quarter mil. Max. Okay. Like, I, I don't know. So call, it costs you the right arm. Call Brandon. Ask him how, how much he's making. Half the capologists in the league are Canucks fans. Like <laughs> literally <laughs> get true. one of them. Get one of them. Like half half of the people who have been hired out of like the... Hockey blog at Twitter sphere. Mm -hmm. Our Canucks fan. So then, <laughs> get my Jesus. my question here too is with those with the you know Besser Horvat Miller twenty four twenty six twenty eight all in good contracts. My question then is: Are any of those guys the elite talent that Pedersen is? No. Right. So this is the problem, right? You got one elite guy, and he knows it, and he was injured last year, but he knows it, and you know it. Right. So you have to pay him. You got ten million bucks. So now, even and then if what goes to Hughes? Well, exactly. Even if he goes comes in at six million, which for Pedersen I believe would be an absolute steal. Yeah, I don't think. And if I'm what Pedersen, was the if he came in at six million, let's say he's not yeah. going to, but let's say then you've only got four million to pay Quinn Hughes. And if I'm Pedersen, I'm looking at this lineup and going, well, I'm going to be the highest paid player, or I'm not playing. So you got to pay me more than seven point two six. This could be uh, this could be Jim Benning's Mona Lisa. You never know. But, <laughs> but, um, man, I still, I still maintain that the Canucks are not far off from being really good. Like, even though I, I don't quite know what they are, like everything that you just mentioned, the high end young talent that they have, mm -hmm. like Bo Horvat on just a really good deal. They got a good young goaltender. They, they got some other good goaltenders coming up. Um, man. Ah, uh, there's something there. There's something there. Oh, there's no question there is. But I just, every year, not knowing, there's still a question of what are they doing, though. It's it's a very frustrating team to watch. Like, as a, as a as an outsider who's just, I don't know, people think I'm anti their team because they cheer for the Leafs. Mm -hmm. I'm, the team I'm anti most is my own. Okay. <laughs> so let's, yeah. let's be very clear about that. Yeah. I, uh, no, when I see a team making decisions, I think are weird. It stresses me out as someone whose team has done that very many times in the past. I think they're, I think they're trying to win. Like, I, I think well, their yeah. goal is 
clear to win, that they're not in rebuild mode. I agree with that. Right. So I guess you move pieces before the start of the season just to give Hughes and Pedersen what they want so you can go for it. I think they're one of those teams that's in on everything. They're going to have to trade something. Yeah. Yeah. They are yeah. going to have to make a move unless somebody's going on injury reserve. And we remember we said the same thing about Tampa last year. And mm-hmm. then, ah, Kucherov. Uh, that's a, he's going to be out exactly five months and two weeks. It's crazy. It's a copycat league. I wonder if this, ye- uh, this year is big time shenanigans. Is there somebody on the Canucks who can go to IR? Are there any? I'm sure you can make an, uh, lingering an effort for anybody. I'm sure like the, the injuries that these players sustain throughout their careers a normal doctor might say, yeah, they can't play hockey anymore. Well, they already got Michael Furlan on IR, and I'm pretty sure he's done. Is he done? Um, but he's listed as on IR on this, on, on cap friendly. Right. Um, you're also paying... Is off, that going to kick off, in $3.5 million more, or is it already taken off the top of the cap? That I'm not sure about. Off-season IR is weird, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure you only have one off-season IR okay, slot. So let's say it doesn't. Yeah, you're still at 13 million. What are you going to pay Hughes? What are you going to pay Pedersen? 13, 13 makes it a lot easier because then you're only about like a million <sighs> off. Because if because because Pedersen, let's give him eight. Like that, okay. I think that's the top end, right? And then Quinn takes four, five. You know, it's oh, you'd have no. To bridge him. According to the market, I think Quinn Quinn's the. I was just thinking about it. I think Quinn and might end up being the higher paid guy. There's no way. The market for guys like him is nine. Over a first line center? Dude, look look what oh, I'm not saying it's the right move. I'm saying like look, look what, what Nurse they got. paid for Tucker Pullman. Look, look what Nurse <laughs> got, look what um Makar got. Right. And you might go well Seth Jones. Now I know Seth Jones is a different part of his career. But, but Makar then. Yeah, Makar okay, then. Makar, so fine. then you look at you look at Hughes and you go, Well, you're not Kale Makar, and you go, All right, well, I'm not three million dollars less than Kale Makar. So you got to give me seven and a half, eight, something like that. I should be getting Thomas Shabbat's contract, eight uh-huh. times eight, something like that. And then you go to Pedersen, and there's a lot of forwards who ended up taking bridge deals a couple of years ago or a year ago. I think, can, can I make a bold prediction? I think Quinn Hughes ends up with a bigger contract this season than Pedersen. I will take that bet. Okay, what, I, what are looking, the odds? I'm just looking at the, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking see. at the uh the top ten highest played paid players in the NHL. Uh two are defensemen, uh one is a goalie, the rest are forwards. I'd be curious to know what the number is under twenty four. Ooh, under the age of twenty four? Yeah, I don't know if you can filter that on I can, family. I can. Current age uh twenty four. Okay, so what are you guys putting on this? Update results. Um Jesse gets to say he was right. <laughs> Steve. The- but if I'm right, Jesse still gets to manipulate the situation so that he's right. Do you want me to read the top 10 players paid, uh, highest paid under 24? Yeah, I am very curious. Uh, one through 10, McDavid. Yeah. Matthew, do you want the numbers as well? No. Okay. McDavid, Matthews, Marner, Eichel, Rantanen, Makar, Aho, Heiskinen, Shabbat. Shveshnikov. I ran out of fingers on the one hand, so that's probably bad. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, one, two, three defensemen. I'm sticking to it. So wait, that There's means no I way. have the the higher paying odds. Yes, your your odds will pay off better because it's less likely to happen. Okay, I so, want it. So what's, <laughs> the bet? what's the bet? What are you guys putting on the line for this? Um, you got to bring Krispy Kreme donuts oh. to the podcast. I drive by a Krispy Kreme on the way here. Well, there you go. And if and if I lose, I will bring Krispy Kreme. I will bring McDonald's donuts because I drive by a McDonald's. That's a little bit different. Do you think they're not equal? They're not equal. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. I will also bring Krispy Kreme okay, donuts. Thank you. You don't have a Krispy Kreme. I'm at the angle where I guarantee I get Krispy Kreme donuts here. So I believe the winner in this is me. Adam's thinking about it. Adam's no, right. The true winner in this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the winner, baby. There you go. Um, yeah, listen, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting one. Pedersen's going to get paid more than you. Hey. I think it's going to come in around eight. Today's episode is sponsored by the NBA and their quest to advance the game of basketball, grow the community, bring communities together, and impact culture. The league celebrates its teams, players, and fans from across the past, present, and future 
as a part of the 75th anniversary season that they're celebrating this year. That's game highlights pivotal moments on court and beyond from iconic plays in arenas to the impact players have had in the community. That's the NBA. That's game. I know, for instance, in our community, the Raptors are in the schools. They're everywhere all the time, building basketball arenas, doing incredible community outreach programs. And that's what the wider NBA is all about. So it's more than just basketball. You know that. I know that. And it's what connects us all. And it keeps us coming back for more. That's the NBA. That's game. Check it out. All right, here it is. It's your favorite commercial of the SDP. Favorite one. What do you think it is? Yeah, that's right. It's Manscaped. And listen, we need to talk about the Performance Package 4.0 for Manscaped. It's not only taken off in the USA, but in Canada, here, of course, duh, the UK and across Europe, Australia, South Africa, Singapore. We're talking in every country, people are discovering what it's like to be so fresh and so clean and so aerodynamic. And that's what Manscaped wants. First off, let's talk about the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim that area of your body, even your anus. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry. It's, it's, it's here. Uh, the fourth generation trimmer also features cutting edge ceramic blade technology. We're talking no accidents. You know what I mean? And, it, you know, the, the, there's so much more that comes in this package. But what I love about it is the fact that it actually has an LED light. So you could see what's happening. Do you know what I'm saying? And here's the thing. We want to give you 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com. Just use the code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E. That's 20% off for a very clean, out-of-this-world feeling. I know that me reading this and talking to you about that area of your body might make you uncomfortable, but the whole point is we don't want you to be uncomfortable down there. So you should get 20% off at manscaped.com with the promo code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E. Just go there, manscaped.com, promo code DANGLE, and you... We'll have a fresh and clean and aerodynamic and just out of out of this world body experience. Okay? Manscaped.com. Use the promo code Dango. Get 20% off. Get free shipping. Go. And by the way, we'll be back with another one of these next episode. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You can check out betterhelp.com slash SDP. Now, life is full of stressors. We know that. It can be your family. It can be your job. It could be your partner and what's going on in their life. And you might have no control over it. If you're feeling a little down and out or depressed, uh, maybe like you're like a total loss, maybe your stress is high, uh, maybe your temper shorter than usual, it could be anything. Unload your stress, get it out, and talk to someone with a completely unbiased view about your life. Someone who isn't going to judge you or take sides on anything, they just want to help. And when there are things that you can't tell anyone, BetterHelp is the place to go. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback that you'd be pretty surprised, actually, what you can gain from this. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Steve Dangle Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash SDP. That's B E. T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash S-D-P. Speaking of brothers in the NHL sticking up for their siblings, uh, Matt Kachuk is on 31 Thoughts this week. And he's talking about Brady. And I love some of these quotes. But my favorite thing is the headline, Matt Kachuk on brother Brady's contract talks. They're not too close. And what I love Love is I love a little bit of the insight about like how these negotiations take place. Remember, we had Alan Walsh on. We're like, Alan, what do you guys do all day? Yep. And what happens? Yep. And so, um, so Matt... Uh, uh, Matt said this, um, he said, uh, uh, I'm in the mix. I'm always there when he's talking about the negotiations. It's a family business. Nobody wants to deal with the Kachucks in this, but we do it by committee. Um, and, and, uh, he was saying this about his brother, Brady. He might be pulling a classic Kachuk right now. Dad held out, Matthew held out. And now Brady looks like he's on his way to hold out. So hopefully he can get it figured out there. But, uh, there's a lot of fake stuff out there regarding this. They're not too close. So hopefully it gets figured out, but who knows? My dad and I are definitely involved. Brady needs uh, us to help him out with that stuff. He wasn't as cutthroat as we were during it, but it's starting to become more of a chuck as it goes on. So um, it's funny. It's funny to hear him saying that. And and uh, Brady Kachuk has not been confirmed as the captain, so we know. Oh, is that? Oh, has, I he, forgot that's he hasn't in the been, air. right? I don't think so. So here's the interesting part. Matt said this: He's a great player. Deserves to get everything he should. He's the most important part of their team, the captain. 
obviously all this oh. all of this stuff is stuff we know about him and he loves it there absolutely loves it there so we'll see what happens but now being in calgary I won't be as much involved obviously because he's going to camp but I don't. Was he named the captain? I know it was offered as a part of the contract, but I don't think that's been officially named. So he just kind of there it is. Said it. I mean, maybe he's like saying he's the team's leader, which I don't think would surprise anybody really. What's he saying, Steve? He, he also just, wears an A. Are you okay? Yeah. You okay. know, he could be referring. Are you guys to the gonna really captain? maybe this? Both of you. I am. Are you? Yeah. Gonna, you're, yeah. You're both gonna be. You're gonna look at me yeah. straight face and go, "Yeah, he might not mean what exactly he said he meant." Adam, as your parents. We are, we are maybeing this, <laughs> all right? I took a break from my show on Chum to maybe <laughs> this at you. Don't you maybe this? He's the captain. Hey, listen. I have a busy day performing on CTV, and Maybe's. I do not need to take time out. And, and creating hits. It's winning multiple Geminis. Yes. Junos. Junos. That's what it is. I am Juno Award winning Alanis Morissette. And I have to take time to butt maybe you. I don't okay. even remember. What does saying, does that make me Ken? And that means I'm You're lovely Ken. and I like yeah. cars. Yeah. There yeah. you go. That'd be my dad. <laughs> lovely likes cars. Here, wait. Let, here, can, can I try? Wait till your father gets home. There, there you go. There, there it is. All right. <laughs> it feels good to say. It feels good to say. It's not something I'll ever be able to no, say. No. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think Matt just blew that Brady's a captain. Yeah, you know Come what? It's on. more fun to think that. Come on. It's more gave, fun to think that. And he that. just gave it to Freege and Merrick. And nobody's making a big deal of this. And this now the Sens kind of have to. Yeah, Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I'll say that Sportsnet got two huge wins. They got Jack Hughes to shred the Canucks. And then they got Brady Kachuk. Sorry, Matt Kachuk saying Brady's the captain. And nobody's talking about it. Not even Sportsnet. What's going on over there? Are you kidding me? These uh, are huge. I hadn't seen it yet, but now they will. You know, that should have been a company-wide email to telecom. Hey, you work at Rogers Internet? Hey, did you know that Sportsnet did this? You should share this on your personal social media. Okay, here's how it works. Sports. It was on Sportsnet. Now it's on here. And now Sportsnet shares the clip of us talking about Sportsnet. You're welcome, Sportsnet. Sportsnet. They won't. Sportsnet. Do, they probably won't. Sportsnet. <laughs> Sportsnet. Sportsnet. They probably so, won't share it because I'm on it, so I apologize. Back in you bell October. Piece of shit. <laughs> Jesse, you're okay now. Yeah. Back in October of last year, um, Bar Down TSM property wrote a terrific Boo! article <laughs> on how they think the Sens leaked that Kachuk was going to be the captain. Uh, back last October. Oh. Because uh, Adidas appeared to accidentally leak the news on its website. If you take a look, you can see clearly see a model wearing a sweater that includes both a C and a number seven. Man. So Kachuk's jersey on the Adidas website had a C on it temporarily, and then they had to remove it after everybody found it. And then he wasn't named captain in Ottawa come the January start of the season. Like, that didn't happen in the last offseason. So it seems like it's been in the works for a little bit, over a year now. That and one I'm going to butt maybe. You're going to butt maybe this one? I'm going to say they had a Brady Kachuk jersey presence, and they're like, okay, slap a C on it, and we'll throw it on the website because they needed a jersey to have a C. That's but, my they're, But they're not printing C jerseys if there's no C on the team. Yeah, but you got to get lots of photos just in case and stuff like that. See, maybe, there, so, maybe there's so several. But maybe this as well. <laughs> so, I told you God. that. I, I think I'm adding to Adam's evidence that this has been in the this works is... for a while and Kachuk has talked about it with his brother and now it slipped up because they've been telling him since last offseason that, hey, there's a chance you could be captain. This was last October. I don't like this court TV nonsense. <laughs> I'm going to make Brady put on the glove and it's not going to fit. Now this, uh, listen, Brady's going to be captain within the next year or within the next couple of months. Whenever that contract gets Did, Yeah. This jersey evidence, does does no one remember the Austin Matthews saga? Well. Does no one well, remember that? That's a whole different scenario. I mm, I kind of agree. <laughs> I do think they were going to name him captain and then very didn't for very obvious oh, reasons. Oh, I mean, yeah. didn't, I, 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 didn't we have that on our show? Wasn't well, that a thing? Everyone did, yeah. Every, yeah, everyone did. Yeah, I think that's what happened. 100%. I'm almost... I, I pretty much everybody has said that. I think that's not a secret, is it? No. Okay. Well, the Leafs deny it. Nope. It was GT the whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Okay. Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. I bet. Hey, um, <laughs> uh, when I bring up the Arizona Coyotes, what feeling usually comp accompanies that? Um, that just if I just bring up the Coyotes' name, mm -hmm. generally speaking. 
nothing. They're they're just another team in the league. On this show, exhaustion. Right. Genuine exhaustion. Right. Because the story is never good. The arena, are they moving? Their their ownership's a mess. Here's Katie Strang to explain it all. Yep. Like it's nothing isn't the correct answer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, he's like, that was... nothing. No, like, I'm saying... <laughs> oh, when I'm like... sorry. I, I forgot all the other shows out there that are like, you know what? Coyotes are neutral. <laughs> neutral. <laughs> We're all neutral about them. It's not that... Listen, I, it's not that I don't want the Coyotes to exist. I do. I want them to be successful. Our best player in, like, franchise history came from Arizona because And of is going to leave for them. Sure he is. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that, everybody. Um, they have 46 picks this upcoming draft, so, like... They're all his linemen. Right. And yeah. Boston had three in a row. And what did they get? Uh, zero, zero, zero. And Jake DeBrus. Oh, and, and, and Jake DeBrus, who they almost traded the Oilers last year. So, uh, <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. my shots at Boston. Yo, I, bro, that's what happened. What? That is what happened. That's what happened. Yeah, but it's who did they miss out on? relevant to the Shabbat? conversation. Ah, uh, Bruins. Barzal? The three consecutive picks following their picks were Barzal, Kyle Connor, Thomas Shabbat. Off. They could have so, so you're saying Jake Arizona is an too, Arizona's so going to be terrible forever is what you're no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you can mess up picks. But what I'm saying, what I would like to say here, <laughs> is that we Shows have a catastrophe. No, it's I agree. Perfect. No, no, it's spectacular. Oh, well, no. Also, it's very good. Here's a tease for something that's coming up. Arizona finally did something right, and yeah. they finally did something right for their fans. Yeah. Uh, which at this point, the way the Coyotes organization have been bounced around, they're lucky to have any fans. Honestly. Yes. Um, uh, the Kachina will be back for good. Yay! The most beloved, one of the most beloved logos in NHL history. Yep. It is a great logo and in a great jersey. And the secondary. And it will be, yes. The secondary with the moon. Yeah. Big victory. Big victory. Um, now, they're actually going to bring the Kachina back for away jerseys, too, because that was the, the home jersey was the white jersey. Yes. But now they're, now, now away is white. So they will use that. No, I think they should go with the the Coyote logo they were using that looks like every other sports team's logo. Why did they... It, there are certain logos, Sabres are one of them, where you go, you had it. It was there. Leave it. Oh, it looks outdated. It's from the 70s. Yeah, that's sort of the whole that's point. That's the thing. Right? It's supposed yeah. to mimic the era that the team was built in. Yeah, they've got Leave it, it right alone. Now. They've got it right now. But they went through a lot of wrong. Oh, they sure did. <laughs> they went through a lot. And that's of why, actually, remember the, the the Jersey rankings that we talked about a few episodes ago from Jay Fresh. Um, I thought it was unfair that he used the Kachina because I'm like, that is not their logo right now. The logo is the Coyote howling at the moon. Right. And it looks that's it looks like code. every college football basketball yeah. logo. Where are the Wildcats? Yeah. Using the Wildcats. Because if there's anything you want to do, it's just blend in. Especially in a market that doesn't know you exist. Yeah. If there's a way to set yourself apart, you be as milk toast as possible. It's it's a great jersey. It's very cool. And I'm so glad that they're bringing it back. Um, and I hope this is a sign of things to come with the, this organization because it really would be, uh, you know, people rag on us for being hard on them. Honestly, we're just telling you what's happening. And 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 to be honest with you, it'd be nice that if this organization could pull it together well, and, and actually have a great season and a great turnaround here. Like, I don't want to... On this show, I don't want to talk about real estate because I'm not Adam and property tax and <laughs> oh, like, or and specialized taxes for 50 years oh, and you know oh please tax haven whatever they call them please just kick me in the chest off a cliff rather than talk about that ever again for eight years straight. More logos should be the animal anthropomorphized as playing the sport. You know, it's fun. The penguin. Yeah, just did go. the ducks ever commit to that? It was always it was like the, the mighty ducks. There was the D two one, one, the right. D two one with the the face mask and the yeah yeah the hockey sticks. But I know that the original Mighty Ducks movie had a duck like playing, playing hockey. hockey. Yeah, but have they ever <laughs> used that on the actual ice? Yes, they have, and I'm going to show you. Uh, Jason York's Twitter picture is him in that jersey, like the original green one. Yeah, low oh. damn you! I have bad. Look up Jason York on Twitter. Or you do it, Jesse, on account of you're the, you <laughs> you control the screen. All right. Let me guess. It's going to look exactly like how I think it will. Oh, it's, this is the it's, one where- It's like the cartoon. <clears throat> Remember there yeah. was a cartoon? There was. It looks like Darkwing Duck meets hockey. It does, actually. Um, but there there was a cartoon, um, and I want to say McDonald's had all the toys. And uh, I collected them once upon a time. They were very cool. I'm not surprised that you had all the- pro You probably still have them somewhere. Uh, maybe, probably. <laughs> probably. Remember those orange plastic hockey sets that 
oh, this is so much fun, immediately under the TV stand. Right. You spend 45 minutes with your cousins trying to dig it out. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. I think... I think I think you're right. I think the ducks are missing an opportunity here. The duck foot thing is, I'm so glad to be just Dallas and and Anaheim with the two worst jerseys in the league. I don't know how you anthropomorphize the city of Dallas, but you got to figure it out. Figure it out. Make a star star with Give a hockey legs. Skater. Yeah, just put a, skates on. It. Put a skate skates on a on a star on a star, <laughs> or just bring the star back. Like like oh, the pan was great. Be- the Panthers logo is like it's terrifying. It's a Panther. It should be a little Panther playing yeah. hockey. Urgh. Yeah. No, I want to. I want to go back to Dallas for a second. Oh, I want. I want them to be the first jersey with googly eyes. I, I think that'd be great. <laughs> just a star in the middle of the jersey and googly eyes, and when there's a big hit, you just see it go it's, all over the place. It's like one of those stars you get in elementary school when you do a good job. Yeah. It's smiling at you. It's super happy. And the and third plays jersey hockey. is a macaroni picture. <laughs> That says, I love green, you, Dad. A green macaroni picture. That's yeah. what I want to see with Dallas. It would just be great if every logo just had two two legs and two arms and a hockey stick. Yeah. Like the Hurricanes a, logo is just like the a leaves. Yeah. With, with, put, <laughs> put a little leaf playing hockey. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah put googly eyes. They all have to have googly eyes. Make it happen. I need it now. I would like them to get rid of Carlton the Bear. And instead have a mascot that's a leaf and he walks around and he has a little hockey helmet on and he plays hockey. With hey. with sewer great sized googly eyes. <laughs> Two. <laughs> right there yes. in the middle of his face. <laughs> I want it. I want it and need it. There's a lot of branding opportunities here too. All the stars when they fall over, on the bottom of their skate it says oh. Andy. I want to see it. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, it's Toy, Toy Story. Story. Yeah. They have like a Woody jersey where their jer- their jersey's like a vest. They got like a vest and it says Andy under their skate. Okay, all right. So they the know who they belong to. The bottom of your foot to. is not looking good. Yeah. No, Why? <laughs> I'm your Sorry. foot clean. <laughs> I just went <laughs> So Steve got these socks probably for free from somebody. and they're, I bought they're these. <laughs> <laughs> and they're white, but they're brown. <laughs> <laughs> You must have dirty shoes. Yeah, your shoes, okay. <laughs> or maybe oh, there's just too many t- stained, man. <laughs> I don't know. Too many park trips with uh, Iggy? Oh, that's probably oh, it. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'd be oh. amazed with a dog and a toddler how many times you have to begrudgingly run outside in your socks. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, just, I can't understand why they're not white anymore. <laughs> I don't know. You know, now that you mention it. Mm. <laughs> Super happy you put them next to my face. Yeah. How many times do you have to go, no, 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 and it's raining? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, googly eyes. Um, <laughs> Give it a thought. <laughs> so good on the Coyotes. Excited for their fans. You can pull your old jerseys out. Your old Kachuk jersey. Your old Ronick jersey. Who else? No, maybe Bowler. not that one. I'm on to Jan- you. Craig Janney guy. Wayne Tempo- Gretzky. Nina. Yeah. Coach. Suit coaching with the Kachina. Oh. Uh, did they have the Kachina when he was coaching? No, no that was their in-between the- like mm. super pro sports logo. Oh, God. You know? The horrible like sand of prince edward island did, color did, did yeah. you jersey? talk what? about the the abs jersey changes last episode I yes we remember. did mm-hmm. okay again i just want to repeat what are they thinking it's that's all they, they no the throughout every avalanche game it should be all the songs that you hear while playing ones in ea uh <laughs> in, in, in nhl <laughs> with with those jerseys like it's they're here's a bamf they're terrible they're playing on ice yeah yeah just and interference is allowed yeah for all <laughs> all avalanche games interference is allowed just, and you forget until you get and you up. hit a money puck and you're like ah yeah. minus two yeah all the fans <laughs> three <laughs> three <laughs> It it does look like they're playing on top of a mountain in in EAS. And you know what? With with <laughs> with pants like that and jersey numbers colored like that, with that combination, they deserve to get slashed. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Joe Sackick, what are you thinking? You have the perfect jersey. There's a great jersey. There has been that jersey's been great since the the since 1996 when they moved there and but, won a cup. But what if we fucked with it? Said every NHL team She's, ever. And listen, man. Here's the thing. You're not. You're an NHL GM, you're a present GM. You're not an interior designer. You're not an exterior designer. You're not a clothing designer. This is not your <laughs> avenue. I don't think interior it's not designer your, is just, the right thing. Just leave it. <laughs> Fabrics are not your thing. 
I'm just deal- talking about anybody dealing with fabric. Right. Fabric is not your thing. <laughs> Color combination is not your thing. You wear a black suit every day. All right? Just leave the jersey. Leave it alone. Stop picking at it. Okay? I'm so upset for Avs fans. That is the ugliest Do you think jersey. the GM sitting there making the jersey Yes! Changes. Do you think Channy didn't make the uh, the Leafs jersey? I don't think he's making the jersey. He was certainly a part of the, the I think crew. He's got bigger frist for fry. I'm just picturing Joe Sackick with like a piece of paper and a crayon. <laughs> tongue sticking out of the side of his mouth going, all right. Here, what if we here. did, what if we did like a that. color that doesn't match the colors we already have at all, even slightly? Uh, Jesse, how it's bad. <laughs> How far through The Sopranos are you right now? Uh, I stopped watching it because I started watching other TV. Oh. Yeah, only, I only started watching the first five episodes, and then I forget what show came out. Um, it was one of the, uh, I think it was like White Lotus or something came out. and then I Did you like White Lotus? Adam reminded White me Lotus of was the... unbelievable. I loved it. Okay. It was great six episodes. That's, Is that you... the Nicole Kidman one? Uh, no. no. Okay, that one no. was dumb. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I, I know what you're talking about. What are you talking White about? Lotus, I should, that okay, I should watch White Lotus. There's one where like, Nicole Kidman. It's got a great cast. Uh, uh, Melissa McCarthy's in it, whatever. And they all go to like a retreat. Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong one. And, what? And Nicole Kidman's like a cult leader, retreat leader. Have you guys seen that one? It's on HBO. No. Okay. Well, it's, I don't think the the idea of it's great. The reveal is such a disappointment. It's so bad. And I I caution you because I just don't want you to be let down. So hard. her career is bizarre. Like it's like if like you think of the success early in her career or like you know a, a decade decade and a half ago yeah it's like if randomly anthony e. hopkins decided to only do m night Shyamalan movies <laughs> like if- i think she wanted to, to get away from the movies she had done she, she's done like comedies and and then really dark stuff and and like she's got range and she always has and then did days of thunder with tom cruise back in the day i don't even know what that is days of thunder is the nascar movie where he's a driver tom cruise did a nascar movie he sure did it's a big one. I have is, no idea. Is the show you watched called Nine Perfect Strangers? That's it. Okay. So Avoid. I haven't seen that one. Now, so, I, can I tell you my Nicole Kidman story? Yes. <laughs> Who has a Nicole Kidman <laughs> story? Guys, I got a Nicole Kidman story. How did... Th- okay. All right. So, so randomly, uh, <laughs> when I was doing all those interviews with Breakfast Television uh, and Entertainment City, I was doing like a whole, everybody's album release, whatever. So I remember after BT one day, they're like, okay, you're going to uh, this hotel, Four Seasons or whatever. And you're going to go interview Keith Urban. And I was like, okay. So I throw my jacket on, which is a $20 fake leather jacket from Forever 21. Nice. I walk in. Keith Urban is wearing the exact same sort of jacket. Like literally like leather. And he's like, oh, matching today. And Keith Urban, by the way, is one of the nicest human beings I've ever met in my life. Keith Urban said that to you. Yeah. He was just like joking around. He's like, oh, uh, like you got the memo. Like he's, And he was super fun. The it's album, it's of like course. pulling a red Fiat. Up to like a red Bentley. And yeah. Like, hey, hey. Well, yeah. Mine was 20. His was like 20,000, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, we had great interview because Keith Urban, anybody that interviews Keith Urban walks away going, I feel like a better person. Keith Urban and Will Smith have that effect on people. I've interviewed them both. Both make you feel good about yourself. And so Keith and I, you know, chatted or whatever. Six months later, it's TIFF. Toronto International Film Festival, if people don't know. And Nicole Kidman has a, a movie coming out. Obviously, she's married to Keith Urban, has been for a long time. So they're walking the red carpet. I did not know that. And uh, oh, you didn't know they were married? No. Oh, they've been married for years. I, I didn't Both know Aussies. that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and walking the red carpet. And she's notoriously quiet, right? Shy. Um, and probably just, you know, when you're married to Tom Cruise and the circus that can be around that, probably rightfully so. So we're, she's walking down the red carpet, not doing interviews with anybody. Like they'll, a lot of the time you'll be waiting there as a reporter and you have to show that, show up there two hours early. Then they lock the carpet an hour later and then you're there for an hour. And then the people walk for 15 minutes and then you're there another 45 minutes when it, till it's over. And oftentimes you get nothing. Yes. And so she's not talking to anyone, talking to anyone. And, and all of a sudden Keith Urban and I lock eyes cause he's there with her. And he goes, go speak to Adam. <laughs> and he remembered me. And I, <laughs> <laughs> so Nicole Kidman came and talked to me and because Keith Urban said, Hey, go talk to him just because I was wearing a shitty leather jacket and then we had a good time and that was it. And apparently he does this sort of stuff all the time because he's got one of those weird memories evidently where oh. he can remember. I wouldn't remember anybody. Like I don't have that sort of memory. He's like, if he meets you, he never forgets you. He's got one of those weird sort of things, which is kind of crazy. Pinball Clemens is like, that. is he? Yeah. Oh Yeah. 
Man, there's another guy that you're like, electric energy right there. He sees my aunt like once every five years at a charity event. And he's like, Joanne! Like he just... <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, yeah. That's Pimble's wild. an unbelievable human. Yeah, he should best. run yeah. the country. Yeah, I was... Uh, I, he's too, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. His, can you imagine... He's too, Big PPC guy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? He's too smart to run for office in this yeah. case. Yes. Now, what does that get you other than hate? Right. He he talks at the Con Smythe Gala, and I finally got to see it in action. And he has he he mm -hmm. just goes, "All right, how many people are here? I'm okay. I'm going to make every one of you cry. Oh. I'm going to make every one of you cry and just turn your wallet upside down and dump it out on the table, <laughs> and you're He's gonna hand it over to the charity. He's an amazing. What man. did He's you great. ask Nicole Kidman? I, I don't even, it was about the movie and I was oh. so nervous that I can't remember what I, I, and then I remember saying thank you to him. He's like, no problem, no problem afterwards. And that was it. That's my Keith Urban story. That's all I got. That's but, uh, or it's, it, yeah. Is it a Nicole Kibben story? Not really. It's a Keith Urban story, but, um, it was one of the cool things that happened, right? You just, yeah. you, you start to, if you run into these people enough, they do start to remember you. And then just, she said, my kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Blow. <laughs> Yo, that's going on Instagram, and we're rating your Aussie accent out of 10. All right? Oh, that's nerd. going on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesse, I'm telling you straight up right now, no. <laughs> no. See, Adam and I watched the Wiggles, so we got a leg up. All right. <laughs> what a preposterous show, by the way. The Wiggles. The Wiggles. Everything hey, about it is makes strange. no sense. You None guys, the, the two main shows that your children watch are art, in, like North American yeah, accents. Peppa and you know, and, it's Peppa and. Oh, uh, Leo's not into Peppa. No, it's not Peppa. Not, and not, the Wiggles are Australian and Peppa's yeah. English. Right. I'm finally getting a break from Peppa because Everly's decided she likes. Um, hey uh, Google, <laughs> play Peppa Pig. Which she yells out in the middle of the neighborhood. I She's love decided it. Decided she likes Paw Patrol now too. So, so that's good. Leo likes Blue's Clues. Well, you liked Blue's Clues, didn't you? Yeah, but I liked it when it was Steve. And then everyone's like, oh, well, and then Steve abandoned us for Joe. No one talks about Josh. Who's Josh? He is the new Steve. And? He's really talented and it bothers me. Why? Because I could never, I think if Leo could choose a father, it would be Josh. <laughs> is he that obsessed he with Josh? He can sing, he can dance, he can play the guitar. I can't. Is he like Bo Burnham? It's just, oh, you have too many talents. It's scary. He just, yeah. But like, they're all kind of catchy, but like, he's definitely like, it's a cry for help as well. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, Blue's Clues got really dark. <laughs> he's like, he can't get out of the house. and <laughs> Man. People have yeah, to come rescue it's him. It's about how he's trapped in there <laughs> with, with like all dog. the utensils. And, so and they all started talking. <laughs> and at the end, there's a big twist. I would watch a remake of Inside, but he's trapped in the Blues Clues. What's the Leonardo DiCaprio movie? Where it's something Shutter Island or something? The like Shutter that? Island, yeah, where it just turns Shutter out Island. he's a crazy guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Blues Clues. Oh, the dog's talking to me because I'm nuts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> goes outside once a week to terrify the neighbors by having a full-on conversation with the mailbox. <laughs> What's the name of the volleyball that starts? Wilson. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Wilson. He's yelling oh. at the chair. Man, I remember finding out that that before that movie that the volleyball Wilson is his wife's last name, Rita Wilson. Oh, I did not know that. So oh. when they were out shooting on location, he would pretend it was his wife, and I was like, "Shed a tear." Isn't that adorable? Some Tom, actors go too far. Tom Hanks, man. I don't. I don't need this to be that realistic. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> who, like all the actors who like don't bathe for the character. Oh yeah. Like oh, what is it? I, I think it was uh there will be blood. Daniel Day Lewis is on set and he was like Daniel Day -Lewis he was, was like crazy, aggressively though. mean to everybody because that was his character. Yeah. He was just and it's like you don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Kylo Ren uh went to space to do that. No, we didn't. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Bullshit. <laughs> Adam That's Driver. Some method acting. Adam Driver lived in space for 10 years. And he said, "Good space." <laughs> Then he took off his shirt and everybody's like, those nipples are too far apart. Hmm. Am I right? Those are too far apart. Also, you might murder me one day. <laughs> Yo, okay. Can we just talk about for two seconds here? Adam there are Driver. two guys. There are most most guys, I, I get why people find them. The two I can't guys wait for hockey. <laughs> two guys, I'm like, these guys? Now, they seem like, first you know, off, they seem like show. really cool guys. Wait, who? 
Kylo Ren and a- Adam Driver. These two guys. Adam Driver's oh, one sorry. of them. Okay. Every the every guy. every woman I know who is attracted to men, every man I know who is attracted to men, is obsessed and drooling over this guy. The other one's Pete Adam Davidson. Driver? Pete, Pete Davidson. Da- like there's like a two of the two of them have this hot factor. Neither of them. I get it. You get him? But you get I, it? I, Jesse, do you get it? I, Adam I Driver, I get, I get it. it. What, do you get it? what is it about it's Adam an Driver? attitude. A, yeah, Adam is Driver. It? So funny, Tiff story. Um, your co-host, Jax. Uh, Jax they all have on. stories about these people. Because <laughs> they go to things other than Leaf Media Day, where it's the same 20 players every year. <laughs> I saw Ricky Gervais outside of the Royal York once. That's my non-hockey celebrity story. Oh, guy who signed an 11-year contract. It's you again. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, you know. So mean. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, you should hit one him. time Paul Hendrick pushed me to the front of the scrum to talk to Brad Boys. I love Paul Did Hendrick. you get that? No, I did not get that. Did you chip? I did ask Connor McDavid right, about being captain, about, though. Uh, who, who were they again? Adam, Adam just destroyed Adam. you. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Jesse. What's the story? What's the story? <laughs> no, 11 year contract. It's, it's not. you again. I like where this show is going. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. Uh, but Jesse, tell uh, Adam Driver just passed. I was going to tell a big story, but it's a <laughs> simple story. Adam Driver uh, walked past us at TIFF, did not uh, talk to anybody on the carpet, the absolute opposite of Keith Urban. But uh, his presence, when you stand next to him, he's a huge dude. He's got just uh, dozens of people around him, chaperoning him everywhere. And you get it. You see him and you're like, oh, that guy's like a star and people gravitate gravitate towards him. So So what I don't understand about that with the red carpet, and I worked in entertainment for years, is I don't get... Why, if you don't want to talk to him, why are you walking him? <laughs> like, like, really, that's the point. You go there to t- get pictures taken, and then you go and you talk to the media about your movie. If you don't want to do it, go in the back door. Like, I, 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 that, that I never understood. Not that I'm bitter about it, because I don't care. Like, it was sort of, when we did these interviews, it's funny. You'd stand there for three hours, and three seconds of what you make uh, of what you got might make it onto TV the next morning. And if it didn't, it was gone forever. I know. So, this, that's like this one time I, I got ducked by Tim Stapleton while covering <laughs> the Marlies. <laughs> it's the same. I think that for a lot the of these, these I the think same. for a lot of the celebrities, a, 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 that's a part of the show as well. Showing up to the carpet and walking by everybody who's trying big to get... Big time in you? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a part of the, the whole persona and the act. I, I, I think... That's Amen. what Adam Driver was doing in that moment when there was oh. a dozen handlers walking with him and he's supposed to do a whole bunch of media. He's supposed to come up to Jackson and I and do two seconds with us. And mm-hmm. he walks by literally everyone. And then he has his handler selling. No, no interviews not doing it this time. I think that's a that's part of the whole thing. Well, that's just my it's thing. funny. You know what? You're probably right. And and I, I'm going to do this for two seconds. And then we'll get back to hockey. Cause the Leafs, <laughs> we got to talk about the Leafs wing situation, but do we? the, they have like 18 we, wingers. Yeah. Um, but what, uh, I believe Five, seven, Napoleon did this, and a lot of Chinese emperors did this. Um, there was a... I, I, <laughs> just bear with me. <laughs> bear with me. This makes sense. All right. All right? They would create extra rooms in the palace that you would have to wait in before you went and saw them. So they would seem bigger than life. So mm. if you wanted to go see a Chinese emperor, you'd be like, wait in a room for a couple, a couple hours, and then they go, okay, come into the next room. Okay, come on into the next room. Okay. And the whole... And then you get into the throne room and they're elevated and it's to create this this vision in your mind of this person can't see me for this many hours they have this many rooms this one and so when you have a guy like adam driver who's got 18 people in his entourage i don't know that he does but i'm just saying um and and oh i'm not going to talk that kind of makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. it, it does create an air for sure it does sorry i know to bring it back to history i'm sorry about that and with pete davidson he's just like trashy hot yeah? yeah, he's funny as hell. Oh yeah, and he's funny. attractive, right? Yeah. Like he's so funny. But uh, I just okay. All right, just check. By the <laughs> way, Galch, as of 15 minutes ago, has signed with the Coyotes on a PTO. No way, man. Why back there? I I thought, from what I understood, the Leafs really wanted to get something done with him, and I think he may have overplayed his hand this yeah. offseason. I don't go know to where, what he did. Go to where the team that that rehabbed you, right? They need and they need him. Like, they need guys in the wing. Oh, boy. And the thing is, they've got... So, that, here's what they did. They signed Gusev to a PTO. Hosang's on a PTO. I forgot about that. Richie, Robertson, Mikheyev, Bunting, and Kasha are all under contract as well. Yep. And it, interestingly, Mikheyev? the Leafs... Did you say Mikheyev? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, 
the Leafs, according to James Myrtle here, I'm going to read this direct. The Leafs are obviously not going to carry 15 forwards this season, nor can they. The 23-man roster as of right now is over $1.4 million. So over the cap, $1.4 million. He thinks Curtis Gabriel and Adam Brooks would most likely be the first cuts, meaning the by October 13th, that would sneak the Leafs 80000 under the cap with 13 forwards, six defensemen, two goalies. I think he's wrong. I, I think uh, I think Gabriel definitely makes it. You really? 100%. Why do you think Curtis Gabriel makes it? That's fascinating. Yeah, no, you don't sign a player like that without, uh, like, what, what are the Marlies need babysitters now? No, you sign a player like that to be a factor on your team in the National Hockey League. You sign a player like that to, um, uh, uh, Frege and Merrick brought up such a great point. Okay. The thing about the NHL regular season is it's emotionally long. Yes. It is an emotionally long season. And you can't rely on Wayne Simmons to drag you into the fight every single night. Or Nick Ritchie. Or Curtis Gaber. Like, now, when, once you start adding, and it's more and more and more, the team becomes more exhausting. Right? So Curtis Gabriel is going to get into conflicts. He's one of the only true heavyweights in the league. Uh, Nick Ritchie is going to get into conflicts. Michael Bunting is going to probably get himself into some scrapes, at least in front of the net, like after whistle stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne Simmons, uh, you know, is always as advertised. Jake Muzzin is going to mix it up. Um, the Leafs did not sign Curtis Gabriel to shove him in, in the minors. I disagree with that. Wow. He's going to be on the team. So you think they're going to find room for him and Wayne Simmons on this roster? Yeah, I do. Yeah, the, the lineup that um, Myrtle put out in the <clears throat> article... Like that's that's where it kind of fits. So what do you what do you see in that lineup? Can you go through the top so, lines? All yeah. of them. Just give me one second to put it on the screen. Yeah. I don't think they play them. a lot of games the same night. Okay. I, like I think Simmons and Gabriel, like whenever you need to give Simmons a night off, you bring in Gabriel. So we have on the first line, uh Richie, Austin, Mitch. Yep. Second line, Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander. That makes sense. Third line, Mikhaev, Kampf, uh, Kasha. So that's not going to make Mikheyev very happy because he's not Kampf isn't going to score big points. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Fourth line, Bunting, Spezza, Simmons. Wow, that's a not that's a not bad fourth line. Extras: Engvall, Brooks, Gabriel. To Engvall, me, they're going to shoot into the sun. Engvall's going to be gone. Now, now Myrtle does say in the article it'd be better to trade him than like lose him for nothing. But I I don't know who's going to want to trade for Pierre Engvall. I mean, that's the case with everybody, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. It'd be better to trade them than yeah. But who's gonna who's gonna take him? So with though that kind of that core set. Say, let's say Engvall's out. So you got Brooks and Gabriel as your two extras. Gabriel kind of slots in in a lot of different spots if you need it. Well, and also Brooks, I feel like is a, isn't he a waiver liability? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so Gabriel, I don't want to lose him for nothing. Gabriel and Brooks, uh, if they're cut, they'll have to clear waivers before the regular season opens. Yeah, I'm so not a fan of that. If you if you keep Brooks on the lineup, then you get him. I like the roster. way Brooks paid uh, played. It's a shame that they're so up against the cap because that's a guy that I would love to right. have as like a 13th forward. Okay, so can there's I, a trade coming. Can I can I throw well, something out? There has out? to be. There, right. I, there better be. Um, that's enough losing guys on waivers, Kyle. That's enough. Yeah. Way too many in his tenure. Way too many. Two goalies the same day is borderline unforgivable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then losing VC. Uh, losing Boyd, Boyd who, was, was, who was effective. Boyd was a very effective player, and VC was on and off. Yeah, um, and I'm sure I'm missing other guys in there. there other as guys, well. you don't have to name the whole list in the same. That's game. enough. That's too many. Well, then you've it's got Ho We can't lose someone on waivers every year. And now you got Hosang and Gusev who are going to be in camp. Both two guys I didn't even mention. Yeah, those guys are waivers insurance because they're on PTOs, right? I see. So you're able to but, carry those guys into the season, sort of like what they did with Brandon Prust a few years ago. He was on a PTO. He stuck around with the team for like a month before they cut him loose. But Gusev and Hosang, if there's a big injury, if it turns out someone sucks, if they lose someone on waivers, they can bring either of those guys in. Wow. Okay. That's what I think. That's interesting. I, I wondered with Gusev and Hosang, because obviously they've got offensive talent, Hosang had enormous talent coming out of junior. Everybody yep. thought this guy's a star. Yep. You could argue that maybe he didn't get a fair shake in um in on island. the island. Yeah. 
But like, what if he comes into camp and he's legitimately better than one of the guys they've already signed? Is that even possible? Is Gusev same thing? Is that even possible? It is. I'm yeah. I'm fascinated to see how the power play shakes out. It, like it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. And part of what made the first unit bad was the second unit wasn't really a threat. Uh, right. So you could shut down the first unit and you know you'd be okay. Yeah. Gusev, who's not the most fleet of foot, but is offensively talented as a second unit guy or Hosang. And it's great because they kind of compete with each other. You know? And but where do you play them in the lineup? Yeah. Great question. <laughs> they're, they're certainly not everyday players. That's why they're on PTOs. You know what I mean? So... I think they're. I look at this roster and I think they're waivers insurance. Interesting. They they might have to start in the minors like Galchenyuk did. Yeah, could be. So Adam, you're not you're moving Gabriel and oh, not I'm, Brooks I'm to quoting, the minors. I'm quoting what Myrtle said. I hadn't really. I, oh, okay. I honestly I looked at this and I was like I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I you know the thing is that that lineup doesn't even include Robertson. And everybody's like, well, he's not going to make the team. He made it last year, guys. I don't think he should. I don't think he wow. should. Uh, maybe unpopular. Uh, Why? His development. The, the one thing that I came across while doing the prospect pyramid a few days ago is, and the Leafs aren't alone in this situation. So many players have had broken development because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, and Robertson among them. Now he got double waived because he got injured. He got injured. So he made the team, got a significant injury had to go down to the minors and the team that he went down to stunk. Yeah. Like it was just whammo after whammo after whammo. Uh, Simeon Durgachinsev, SDA. He goes and gets some experience in the KHL. That's great. And then he comes over to the Marlies. Okay, fine. Like these guys need to stay put though. They need to stay put and focus on a goal of getting better, not making the Leafs, getting better, developing, staying in one spot, dominating and Earning a spot through their dominance. Who is the general manager for the uh, Marlies? It's not Lawrence. Ah, uh, no, it's a new guy, and we did talk about this recently. Chenoweth? Is it Chenoweth? Ryan Hardy. Ryan Hardy. So, what do you know about Ryan Hardy? Not much. <laughs> oh, uh, he was AHL GM of the year with the Hershey Bears. Was it? I think he was. They have to be better this year. That team. They have to be better. Mm. I just, here's the thing. Um, sneakily, last year, because we really didn't pay as much attention unless you're like a hardcore Maple Leafs organization. That, and that's fair if you are. But the Marlies were awful. And let's not forget that, like, actually, they became awful as soon as Sheldon Keefe left. As soon as he left, almost to the game, they're, they fall off. I Honestly, look at the record. It's crazy. And... And so, and then, you know, just the emo situation. Yeah. That's the first hire for that new general manager, by the way. That was the first guy he hired was that's Dusty Emo. one. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. And here's the thing. From what I have heard, several people in the organization were extremely upset. Rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so my question is, and I'm going to keep a real eye on the Marlies this year. What are the Marlies now? For when Dubas was running them, I don't think anybody can argue that they were a great development system. Mm-hmm. Him and Sheldon did a fantastic job down there. And anybody that says otherwise is like, I, what are you arguing with? They yeah, There's a they, reason they're running the big club now. Yeah, they yeah. graduated so many players that it, it's it's crazy. I mean, at one point, it was most of the roster now. And not just oh, the high-end guys. Yeah, no, a lot of the guys, though, had to get moved on. Hyman and Kapanen and Janssen and all Brown the... And, Brown, yeah, all those guys, though, great depth pieces. Hall. Hall, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know... To haul at 27 when everybody had given up on him, right? On a, on an ECHL deal. So the thing is, now I don't think the Leafs have the strength and intelligence that they used to have with the Marlies. I'm 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 already, and I think I think I'm right to say this. If if you miss the kind of detail that the goaltending coach you're hiring has an, a Twitter account that is literally alt right adjacent, if not fully alt right. I'm gonna say full. like full, fully, <laughs> fully cool with 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 racist shit and liking yeah. it. Mm-hmm. If you miss that, what else are you missing? It's like the whole Van Halen brown M and M's thing. If we see any brown M and M's, we're trashing the bed. We're not gonna play tonight. Right. And it's not about the brown M M&M. and M. It's about it's focus. about the detail. 
And one thing I'll say, I've been critical of, of Sheldon. I've been critical of Kyle. I still think that they're very smart people and they're extremely detailed. Of course. And the Marlies won and became successful because they were extremely detailed with the Marlies. I'm, I'm very concerned about where this goes. And I think they're off on a really bad foot. So Now, tons of time to turn it around. Yeah. But the Marlies franchise, given that there's been COVID, has not looked great in the last couple of years. No, I think you're right with that assessment. Um, but I was talking to someone about that and, um, no one ever wants to be bad by accident. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and we all fuck up. I get it. Yeah. I don't think the Marlies were bad by accident. I think the team knew they were going to go through some pain. Um, look, look at the roster from last year. I, at, at one point, I think over half of it was AHL contracts, which, when they were killing it, almost every player, I think there were a few nights where every single player, maybe outside of Justin Hall, was on an NHL deal. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. That's good shit. Mm -hmm. We can call every single player up. That's good shit. The Marlies went through a bit of a dark uh, time. So then my question would be why? And I can't. you can't blame that on, on the new GM. They, I think they exhausted the, the, the cupboard a little bit. And but now they're about to get it back. Okay, all they're, right. They're going to get it back over the next few years. This year will be better. Next year will be even better than that. They have a lot of guys in college, a lot of guys in Europe, a lot of guys in junior. They just their AHL system was poor. I but know, it's about but to it's, get it's so of all the things to restock and and to be able to plan for, especially with the budget that the Leafs have. I don't think they should have a bad year. It's also on that, Kyle fair. Dubas for moving away the majority of the Leafs draft picks in the last three to four years. Which he's, I get why he has. Right. So you're you're doing that at the expense of your AHL team, which is okay if you win. Yeah. But they haven't won. Yeah. That's, oh man. That's so do, tough. Do like, to I can't right? If you have no right? middle round picks, you know. They're like, how is, it's not really Greg Morris. Oh, not Greg. Je uh, Matt, Matt Hardy? Jeff Hardy? One of the Hardy boys. Oh, one of the Hardy boys. The GM. <laughs> That's not his it's fault. Lita. Lita. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, again, you, you can understand where I'm coming from. That's a big detail to miss. Yes. It's a, it's a very, I love, a few years ago, I would have been like, that brown M&M story is so stupid. <laughs> and I get it now. Right. I get it now. It, it makes a lot of sense. But I'm, listen, if they're bad this year. Um, it add it to the list of reasons why I tear the whole damn thing down. Because I still think you keep Martin and Matthews no matter what. No matter what happens, you keep those two. Oof. I'm on the train again. You Both know why? <laughs> Here's why. <laughs> I'll tell you something okay. that happened this episode. Okay. You named the top players under the age of 24 who are getting paid right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that two of them are extremely expensive Toronto Maple Leafs, but they're still under the age of 24. So, oh, I don't know. Oh, That's man. a rough one. <laughs> you don't think they are who they are if they hit 25 and they fail in the playoffs again? Uh, well, they haven't hit 25 yet. But I They're think, about to. I think you, yes, agreed. I still think... I mean, man. I no, Listen, I don't... I, it's not that I, 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 I take back any of the criticism I had for them last year in the playoffs. But they're not even 25 yet. And their best years are ahead of them. Mm -hmm. It's 25 to 29. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can listen. I get the reaction that I'm getting right now. I understand, but I think there's got it. If, if I'm looking for a silver lining, and I'm gonna, but maybe this, right. Stephen, Jesse, as my parents, I'm but maybeing this back to you. But maybe 25 to 29 are the best years for how, ma how many shots do you get? Oh man, I don't know. That. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, if you're gonna you're you're gonna have to lump them all in, right? Like, uh, I love I love uh, this version of Eight Mile. If you had. Six, six shots, <laughs> six opportunities to, to be somewhat notable in Leafs history. Would you capture it? Because really, second round, we're asking for second round, yeah. right? We're not asking for much. What if they don't make the playoffs? I mean, they'll make the playoffs. Yeah, I'm, the playoffs. I need new playoff memories so bad. I'm so tired of talking about Gary goddamn Volk. Like, yeah. <laughs> just win a series! By the way, when they do win, I will be the biggest supporter in the stands. Yeah. I have no problem saying that. I was frustrated and angry, and yes, uh, I think that the criticism was warranted, but it doesn't mean I wouldn't cheer for these guys. That's the one thing I'll say. I'll still cheer for them all day. All day. It's an odd take. 
You know, the you know what the most before the season Listen, be like, I'm, you know what? If they fail miserably again, give them another shot before anything happens. I think, you know what the most I think you have unfair, to blow the rest of it up. The, here's what the, sure. the most unfair thing in the world is going to happen. Tell They'll me. fail to get past the first round again this year. Mm -hmm. Dubis will pay for it with his job. Yes. The new GM will come in Bring and be like, all right, I got to evaluate everything. He's not going to trade Matthews. He's not going to trade Marner. They'll win. I like that. I like that scenario. It ends in them winning. That's what Nona's did. Yep. Walked into the GM job, did almost nothing, and they make the play. Actually, he made the team objectively worse by instantly buying out um, uh, uh, Grabowski. Grabowski. No, that was the. That was the. That was Nona's first year. It was his first off season. Oh, See, right. Because they did make the plan. Th right. Those moves, though, it looks like nothing's being done when the GM's fired. But the, when the GM gets fired, the next person on the list is the player. Is the mm -hmm. players. So if you're if you're upper upper management, you you let go of the people above the players, and then you let the players know, hey, you're next. So it it does do something in the respects that it it can push the players to do something because they know their jobs are on the line now. Lou Lamorello let the team know that by trading five guys on picture day. So maybe I'll be reporting on a trade tomorrow. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe I'll be one on one with someone and they'll get a we'll phone see. call right in the middle of it. We'll um, see. actually, phone call. They'll be in the building. Hey, you've been traded. Slam the door. <laughs> um, if you get the opportunity, check out Jonathan Drouin's story about why he left the Habs last year. And imagine, I mean, he couldn't have known that they were going to the finals, but imagine, right? Uh, and, and, you know, he said, let me just give you this quote before we move on here. He said, I played, uh, with anxiety for several years without really knowing what it was. Even in my first years, I was dealing with anxiety problems and it was difficult for me to speak to anyone about it or get help. I wasn't even sure what the problem was and I didn't recognize it, but last year it clicked and I went to get some help and some people to support me. Now I understand what's happening. I understand little moments when you feel anxiety and things like that. So I've taken care of it and I know how to handle it now. And it led to him not being able to sleep and feeling sick and a whole bunch of other things. So I'm, I'm, that's one, that's one story I want to watch this year because I think, um, anybody who's journeyed with anxiety a little bit, uh, will tell you if you, if you, once you recognize it, it becomes manageable most of the time, right? Like there's some yeah. people where it's a medical condition and I, I completely, um, uh, my heart goes out to you, but for a lot of us, we don't even know that it's affecting our lives until, you know, you go and you seek help and you go, I don't understand what's wrong. And that's that's what happened to me. So you sit in front of a therapist and you're like, oh, I dread everything. Yeah, 100%. Like things that I should love, I'm dreading. What's up with that? Yeah. So um, definitely something that you should for sure, for sure check out. I, I do want to say one thing on that. Um, and I'm going to be old right now. I don't think younger people fully understand the effects of not sleeping. And I know... Because huh. we didn't sleep in our 20s because we partied. Right. Yeah. But you don't understand the long-term effects it has on you. And for an athlete specifically, not sleeping... Sleeping is when you recover. So you play a, you play a wild game and you go to sleep and you recover. And then that's how you're able to go on the ice the next day and feel like an athlete. But if you're not sleeping, you're not recovering. And you're going to hurt yourself and you're so much more susceptible to injury. I fucked my back up when Leo was a baby mm -hmm. and I could not goddamn recover. Like I've, I've heard it a few times. I, I, no improvement, none. And it made everything so much harder. And it's because I wasn't frigging sleeping. So imagine now you're going up against Jake Muzzin. And then <laughs> the next night you're going up against I, I don't know you get smashed into the boards by milan lucic and then you get or smashed, matt kachuk or brady kachuk or smashed into the boards by brady kachuk and then it's you know tyler myers or jt miller and it's every friggin night it's four times a week it's the worst travel in the nhl last year was the canadian division you're flying from oh yeah calgary to toronto no problem it's uh it's it's tough Oh stuff. yeah, you don't understand the role sleep plays in your life. And if you're listening to this at three in the morning right now, go to sleep. Go to sleep right now. Turn it off. Yes, Evan. I think anybody that goes to U of T uh, would say they don't care how much we sleep. <laughs> U of T. U of right. T. Especially U of T. I, I know specifically our buddy Mike Stevens uh, has always told me he's like they just they don't care. <laughs> They're gonna overload you with work till you're dead. 
and then oh, the he homework? graduated. Yeah, he said it's insane. It's one of the craziest. He did journalism there. He said it's crazy. Unbelievable. He graduated though. He made it. I thought he did political science. Did you do political science? I thought yeah. he I thought he did a switch. That's anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like I the, the kids, the people that are watching us at 3 a.m. are usually students. And it's usually they want to go to sleep, but they can't. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you gotta. Yeah. I get that. Sometimes you gotta. Not all the time. Right. Um, fair enough. Yeah. Uh Oilers to retire Kevin Lowe's jersey. Oh. Actually, who made that decision? Did uh, Kevin Lowe make the decision to retire Kevin Lowe's jersey? Well, <laughs> all right, guys. Next on the agenda is me night. What do we got planned for me? So Kevin, by the way, Kevin Lowe is in the Hall of Fame. Uh-huh. Okay. It's interesting because he did win five cups with Edmonton and another with New York. So the six-time cup winner. He had... 84 goals, 347 assists in 1,200 games. Was he a defenseman? Yes. Okay. Um, and he will join Glenn Anderson, Paul Coffey, Grant Fuhr, Wayne Gretzky, Al Hamilton, Yari Curry, and Mark Messier being raised to the rafters. And, and sorry, what was his number again? Uh, number four. I'm trying to Kevin think of Lowe? who wore four before. Was it Taylor Hall? I don't know. I think he wore four. You're, you're asking me? I don't know. I don't know. So... The thing is, I think, you know, Oilers fans have a really, I think they have a really tough, he's the alternate governor of the Oilers. He's never not worked there, right? He was the GM over the darkest years in Oilers history, unquestionably, and they never got better. They just never, ever got better under Kevin Lowe. And so my question for Oilers fans, and I don't know if this is possible, is, when he went into the Hall of Fame, a lot of people said he shouldn't have gone. A lot of people said Kevin Lowe is not a Hall of Fame defenseman. He just happened to play with the Oilers in the 80s. Man. And as, I, as a 33-year-old, I'm not old enough to remember I don't, how good I don't, he was. I don't know. I, I know he was a defensive play. defenseman. But even that sort of has been debunked. But I know that Oilers fans, I think what's weird about this one is usually when you retire a jersey, people are super pumped. Oilers fans on the whole are like, why? I've never seen... A guy being honored by an organization where there's so much pushback. You never, you know what you never see at a Jersey retirement ceremony? Booing. <laughs> <laughs> and is that, is that, that's squarely got to be because of how he did as a GM, right? Oh yeah. Probably. I and, mean. And also they're probably looking at this like, man, like you, you were terrible. So they gave you a promotion. You're an alternate governor. You got kicked upstairs. Right. Yeah. That is, that's uh it's an odd one. It feels weird to say, doesn't it? Like I'd love for like has Mark Spector written about this because he he's good at historical context with the Oilers. I don't know if he has. I don't think he has. Yet. He's good at that stuff, and I just don't have it. I didn't like when I did the Gretzky trade tree. I was like, wait a sec. I was like six months old when he was traded, <laughs> or something like yeah. that. So I was barely alive for Gretzky as an Oiler. I remember being a kid and being like, he played for the Oilers. <laughs> he was always a king right yeah he was a king and then he got traded to the blues his second team what do you mean it's not it's what i don't get it i I found out in like a kid's book that he played for the oilers yeah it was it was him in an oilers jersey and i go oh i didn't know it uh, the only it's reason not like i googled it it was 1995 the only reason i knew about gretzky really at the time was because it was gretzky versus doug gilmore in toronto nowhere else but here in toronto it was like who's the better player <laughs> and he wore the king and he were yeah, and uh, and people in Toronto at the time said Doug Gilmore was the best player in the league that that one year. Hilarious, and I love Doug. He was probably the second best player in the league, <laughs> but, yeah, but Wayne defense. was Wayne. <laughs> yeah, but let's see him go into the corner and come mm. up with what Dougie comes up with, huh? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Dougie was tough. Man. It is true. Fucking ain't yeah. right. It's true. Uh, Travis J Zajac has. Signed we should one also mention oh. that the uh, Oilers also uh, revealed that they'll be honoring Joey Moss. Oh, yes. I did not see that. So, okay, I'm glad yeah. you said that. So uh, they'll have a special area in the locker room with a memorial for him. Uh, he passed away last uh, last October. I'm so glad they're their longtime that. Uh, locker room attendant. Yeah, so shout out Joey Moss getting his uh, locker room memorial. That's It'll pretty, be great. Pretty darn cool. It's yeah. a great story. Um, Travis Ajak is going to retire. He signed a one day one day deal with the Devils. He was obviously outside of the 24 games he played in the regular season for the Islanders last year. He was a Devil and consummate devil and i actually Whatever. thought the way he played in the playoffs i'm like he's got to be back right and this just feels like maybe he's like eh, i'm just not, not. I, I could see how we saw it with matt niskanen 
We saw it with Matt Green or Mike Green, excuse me. Um, I feel like there's been a few players who quietly have gone, this COVID shit, I'm done. I'm tired. David Krejci. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he yeah. left uh, the Bruins. He's, I think he's playing in the Czech Republic. Could come back. But his kids didn't speak Czech, right? And their grandparents don't speak English, I think. And that's what... I've talked about this a bunch of times. Like, it's not a hockey-specific thing. A lot of people are making big, uh, sweeping life choices. There's not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of wishy-washy left in people. Mm -hmm. People are making hard, uh, definitive decisions. 100%. All right. Yeah. So Travis Ajak, uh, great devil, and uh, was pretty damn good with the Islanders, too, in the playoffs last year. Jesse, are we ready for the press conference? We can definitely do that. Let's do it. One thing quickly. Jack Eichel apparently will report to Sabres camp. I know he was showing up for a physical. Yeah, he has to do his physical, so he'll be there. So I'm, I'm not sure if he, that means he's going to continue there, but I did want you to, I did want you to flag that for next episode. So mm. anyway, what a disaster! <sighs> yeah, Tarasenko too. All that. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, I mean, really, I think honestly, I think this, I think the Blues messed that one up. They had offers on the table, they didn't take them. The offers are gone. It's so Even bad if you had to retain, you still had three point five million dollars that would have been able to spend, right? God, Buffalo's so screwed. Because, like, I was actually about to say, "Hey, what happens when two GMs screw up? They call each other." But like, if you're Tarasenko, you go absolutely nuts. Any player with any kind of say is not going to Buffalo. That's tough. That is real tough. Yeah. This is. Uh from the press conference channel on our discord you can join our discord by going to sdpn.ca there's a link an invite link right on the home page join it there jesse what would you say to somebody who says and this is somebody who dm'd me and said i don't understand how discord works <laughs> it's, i can't understand this it's very simple it's it's not even like something you have to learn you'll just you'll make an account and you'll be like oh this is just a forum Mm -hmm. And I just click the thing and I talk with everybody. Yes. It's not it's not an overly complicated uh, process, application. You know, it's just it's literally just a bunch of chat rooms where you chat about all the different things we have in our channels where you can talk about literally anything from sports to life to anything you want that you find entertaining. Shout out the F1 crew. Love you guys. So, yeah. Shout out the F1 crew. They're always doing stuff. Um, so, yeah, I clicked on our press conference questions channel and this is what i see i see a question from felix that says adam steve and jesse what were your first jerseys do you prefer the way the jerseys are made now or in the past hmm. which company do you think makes the best jerseys hmm. <laughs> uh my first jersey was a knockoff leafs jersey <laughs> um, i think everybody's was yes it was, <laughs> it was a knockoff because it had 93 on the back and no nameplate <laughs> just the year yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, i got that from my uncle anthony uh -huh. and uh oh i'm forever grateful for it i would always wear it on picture day i was that kid oh yeah yeah to the surprise of no one okay first jersey ever or hockey jersey I'm going to go with first jersey ever because that's the one I remember most. My first jersey ever. The first sport I was into was football. Oh. So, and that was because of my mother, American. And my first jersey was a Steve Young San Francisco 49ers jersey. And oh. he's the guy that, yeah. He, and then I had a Troy Aikman Cowboys jersey, which fit me like a dress. Uh, my mom always, <laughs> for whatever reason, whenever my mom bought me a jersey for Christmas, it would be down past my knees. Yeah, I, you're going to grow into it, Adam. Into it. And I just was like, this is for a six foot five man. Like, I don't understand. You're going to grow into it. Or or you could just, just give me the size that fits me now. No. Nope. And then she's like, I don't understand why you don't wear your jerseys. No, because anyway, then, then you have to throw it out. Or donate it. And there's something else to get me for Christmas next year. <laughs> or wait till he has a transgression against you and burn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shines with another team and you burn it. In your backyard for Instagram. Burn it. <laughs> you know, I, we have never discussed that fully, but that is an odd human behavior. Yeah, Burning yeah. a jersey that oh, yeah. you bought. You're, you're, you're literally burning yourself. It's, it's dumb sports culture that needs to leave. Ah, well, that's never going anywhere. Yeah. I think we're stuck with that. Mm. Um, yeah, so mine was a Steve Young San Francisco 49ers jersey. My one and only San Francisco jersey. 
Jesse Blake. Uh, my first sports jersey was a Vince Carter jersey. Oh yeah, fifteen. It was the uh, not. It wasn't the uh, like the OG pinstripe Raptors it was one. The, it was the uh, one in between. Yeah, the Raptors one. Um, I think it was Champion brand. I think they were making like the you know like Fanatics makes the low end jerseys now. I think Champion was making the cheapest level then. I'm sure but, that's what mine was too. Yeah, Champion. You put, you put yeah. it in the dryer and it just all flakes off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember actually that's how I learned to do um, because some of the eight on Steve Young's jersey flaked off and I was like, I was really upset about that. So that's when I sort of learned how to do laundry. It was like, no, put you, you put it in cold water inside out and never put it in the dryer. Mm-hmm. And that's how you wash a jersey. Yeah, that's it. That happened to my Eddie George jersey, which is weird because like I never wore it. You know? <laughs> if you don't know this, Steve had a that Tennessee Titans awesome. Eddie George jersey with Carl Kanai jeans that had a metal plate on the back. Literally that I, that on I would just go to friends' houses and fuck up all their parents' right. wooden <laughs> kitchen chairs. Oh, God. Just ruin their furniture. And Steve, you I can't know, believe I was ever invited anywhere. You know Eddie Twice. George so well. What position did he play? Football. <laughs> really? <laughs> was he a quarterback? What team? No. What team? Well, the Titans. Yeah. Okay. He was a running back. I, I don't know, bro. <laughs> He's the best, one of the best running backs of all time. Yeah. It's a shame they didn't oh, win man. that Super Bowl. I, I remember when he used to run back. <laughs> man, it was wild. I loved Eddie George. I oh, so it was him. really just a shirt to you? Oh, yeah. It was a look. I thought it looked Oh, cool. wow. Is it an LEWK look for Steve? Luke. L-E-W-K? L-E-W-K? Oh, Luke. Luke. Okay. I thought that was your high school. Um, this question is... Suede fat farm boots? From oh, God. Doug Shit. Leaf Fan. There's two things here. Uh, the question is, Steve, your prospect pyramid, in your prospect pyramid, why didn't you use a whiteboard? And my add-on to that is, you got a prospect pyramid up on YouTube. I do. And the reason I didn't do it is that shit is a pain in the ass. <laughs> I also just don't think it looks good. So I you, lo- usually you I do it wrong. on a board each year. Yeah. And you didn't this year. I should have done it. I should have had someone do the graphics for me. But what I did was I made very low-end player cards um, to have up the whole time, which I thought was helpful in a step up. But yeah, I should have. I should have made a pyramid. I should have made an actual pyramid. Okay. What was your takeaways from your prospect pyramid? Uh, the Leafs have a way better system than we think. It's sort of an extension of the AHL conversation. Who are the highlights had. for you? Like a guy like Vidi Mietnin, but he's in college. A uh, guy like uh, Matthew Nyes, who I don't think fans are properly appreciating because he was a draft pick this year. And everybody's it, sort of thrown this draft in the trash for some reason. Everyone threw this draft in the trash because they only have three players. picks. Yeah. So we just, th- yeah, well, none of them could possibly be good. And also it was at a time where everyone was mad at the team. <laughs> right? So, uh, well, oh, he's a piece of shit, I'm sure. Right? So, no, yeah. he's, he's yeah. good. Uh, Vidi Mietnin, Topi Niemela was the top defenseman at the World Juniors. Second straight year, the Leafs have had the top defenseman at the World Juniors because it was Rasmus Sandin the year before. Mm-hmm. Uh, SDA still going to be good. Amirov's still going to be good. Avchinikov uh, took steps. Um, they have a bunch of goalies, and surely they'll hit on one. The Leafs have – they actually have a lot of names. They have a lot of – they have enough darts to hit the board at least a couple times, Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah. They're good. You know, I think one of the things, if they don't win something this year, <laughs> it's going to be – well, it's going to be a problem, but it's going to be a shame because I don't think this management group is dumb. It's already been a shame. Yeah, like, I, it has. It has. Wasted years for sure. Yeah. Mm. But I, I I do think that this management group is one of, is probably the best one we've seen in our entire life. And it's a shame that I'm it hasn't myself. come together. Because genuinely, I think that they're extremely intelligent. Maybe Mike's the, the end of the Mike Smith and early Pat Quinn eras with, you know, Cujo and some of the getting Stevie Sullivan for, you know, Doug Gilmore and Alan McCauley and all those guys. But this is a... They draft well. They develop well. They did all the things we asked. If the team, if the, if the pro team could win a, win a series, we were not even having this conversation. And so I really do hope that the, the players reward Kyle Dubas and company for this. As much as I have my gripes about how they've run the team, it's still better than anybody else in my 33 years on this planet. Do you think they should trade Morgan Riley for assets? Yes. Not cap space assets. I do think that. And I think you could do a mid-season deal because you got to see if Rasmus Sandin is going to run PP1. And if he is, 
you don't need Morgan Riley anymore. Even though he's really good. Can't lose him for nothing. I disagree for reasons we will discuss on another That's episode. That's fair. So, That's final fair. question here. This is from Roderick. It has four Steve emotes. Whoa! On the question. Holy shit! <laughs> By the way, that's the other thing you can do. You can ask a question and people vote on it, and they give you Steve and Adam and Jesse emotes, and it's amazing. They it's have awesome. an emote where, like, I I type something where I made a mistake, mm -hmm. and the emote is my face with a hand patting it on the head. Yeah, which I thought was very demeaning. I can't I can't use those because I don't have um whatever I forget I forget what a Discord boost. It's oh. called or whatever. It's like a two ninety nine a month. And I'm like, I, I want, I want gifts in my combat. So I'm gonna pay for that. So I got wow. that. <laughs> um, this is from Roderick. Uh, they asked question for Steve: If the Jays make the playoffs, will you do JFRs like you did in 2015, 2016? Oh, I love that. Oh, that's tough. Well, see, I didn't make them every game. Okay. Uh, when I did it, um, I, mm, I know I did one for the bat flip game because. It was it was the Raptors winning and that were the most highly requested non hockey videos I've ever had. And and I wanted to talk about it. That was in that was what Oh, and the podcast where we only talked about the Kawhi shot. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, was yeah. I came in and I was like that's all I want to talk about guys. Right. Do you, we did like do you an care? hour on yeah. it, like half an hour hockey. Yeah. yeah so um, if there's a significant moment, like they clinch a series if, or something. If it looks like they might get the wild card game. Yep. If they get the wild card game, that's winner take all. It's going to be like an afternoon. It's going to be like a 3 p.m. start. Can you do a JFR for that game? Uh, it's going to be before the season starts. It'll be in the next couple of weeks. Really? Mm. Just guarantee it. Say it. Say it. We're going to do it. You know how busy I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah, Damn. fine. Fine. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Jamba. You know why Jesse and I do this? Is so we have something fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch the video. Yeah, we, we, we push you to do this stuff. I also like t tweeting at you when the game's over. Like, please, please post your video. Yeah, where's my damn elephant? Because I do actually wait. I'm like, well, I wonder what Steve's going to say about this. I, uh, more and more, well, especially game five, six, and seven, uh, immediately after a game i'll just get like a good luck text good luck can't wait from our boy at mikey stevens 81 i just thought you guys should know this is a little bit of nhl news okay uh he just he screen crowd screen grabbed two tweets one from mark lamaru or mac lamaru and one from aaron portsline friend of the show first one this is from last week columbus blue jackets player zach ronaldo gave a short speech against vaccine passports at a PPC party rally. And if you're not from Canada, the PPC is sort of like our far right wing. Um, we don't like immigrants party. Um, and <laughs> what? that's what they are. They're like, please limit Im Im immigration. They are not. They're not great. Uh, he said, it's I'm not anti-vax. <laughs> I'm not anti-mask. I'm pro-choice is what he said. And Mac Lamoureux said, interesting choice, given that CBJ just fired their co a coach for not being vaccinated. And we find out today, source close to Zach Ronaldo tells The Athletic that CBJ made it clear to Ronaldo he wasn't welcome at training camp, awaiting explanation from the club. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, do you, man. Do there you, it is. Man. Get, uh, I'm so, I'm... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just thought, I'm I'm done thought asking. I, it's, it's notable. It's notable. Oh, He's, it's it's definitely notable. I, I thought it was interesting that, um, by the way, Bill Daly gave an interview, I think it was to Sportsnet, that said, that, and he said, I th he said, like, it's going to be, what do you say, under 10 players that are going to be not? Oh, yeah, they said 10, like 10 to 15. 15. Yeah. 10 to 15 was the number. And and we're the thing about that is when it's that few, people are going to find out. Well, and what's interesting about that, though, is I don't know if that number includes AHL guys. And the Montreal Canadiens have a significant prospect, and I, th I think it's Jesse Yelonen. And uh, he's not vaccinated. Their farm team plays in uh, Laval. How the hell is that going to work? Ooh. That's uh, he, it was really interesting to hear him on the 30, Bill Daly on the 31 Thoughts podcast because when he was talking about the unvaccinated players, uh, I think it was Friedman who asked him, are you going to try and get a travel exemption for those players? And his answer was basically, if the, the number's 10 to 15, it's not worth going to the government for these guys. We're not going to do that for them. Because it's not just, hey, 
I make a phone call and I get the Canadian government to give these guys an exemption. It's weeks and weeks of negotiating and paperwork and and discussions with the Canadian government. So he was like, if the numbers are so low, we have to make an assessment as to whether it's worth it to ask for something well, that is it, huge. Is it worth it to the business? Yeah. Because you do have that connection, but you don't want to make everything a mountain. Right. Are you going to the Canadian government every couple no. of months because you have a couple of guys you don't want to get a vaccine? Or do you say, hey, you guys, you're 10 people in our 300 player league. You know, this is your, your problem here. Do you want what happened to the Stars? Do you want what happened to the Canucks? Do you want what happened to the Blues to happen again? No. This is the rule. Stick to it or eat shit. That's how rules work. There's nothing to it. You, you, you <laughs> guys gonna... want me to expand on follow the rules? <laughs> That's what they're for. Steve, stop oppressing people. I'm I... Stop oppressing me. <laughs> stop oppressing me. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Now it's your turn. I want to go places. Well, you can. Mm. Now you can, because you're vaccinated, brother. Good for me! You, like 80% of Canadians, by the way, I believe we hit 80% uh, recently, mm -hmm. very recently. 80%. Good. So if, if people were like, well, you'd be surprised at how many. No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's, it's probably less than 20. It's very small percentage. <laughs> you're, you're, you're setting me up. You're setting no, me up. No, you're we'll setting me up. Listen. Steve, you're not pure blood. Oh, that's the thing they're calling it now. It's the, it's the Voldemort thing, right? Yeah. We're just a bunch of mudbloods now. All right. Well, listen, I... And hilariously... Oh. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> hey, listen. It's been a fun show. It was all over the place. Who cares? Next episode... Nicole Kidman. Two, I'm so over it. Two oh, major no. announcements. Er, two major announcements. One at the beginning, one about an hour in. All that we're very excited about. And we're so, so pumped about the future where this is all going. So please... Tune in next episode for sure because it's going to be super exciting. And that's all I can say, right? That's all I can say? I don't want to. Anyway, Steve's not even focused. You, you tell me. Oh, sorry. Oh, I will tell you. It's going to be amazing. I'm so pumped for this. And um, yeah. You tell people too. that it's actually going to happen. It is going to happen on Thursday. <laughs> the announcement that we've been teasing Thursday, 48 hours. Give me 48 hours. It's only been months in the making. God. People have no idea. No idea. I have no idea. Well, what's, what's going to happen? I, I, you'll find out. Tune in in 48 hours. More Nicole Kidman stories. <laughs> Woo! Nicole Kidman get crazy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm going to come back from Leafs Media Day and tell you about my lovely conversation with David Conn. We should get Steve a Stanley Cup cookie. <laughs> The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.